Women, do you ever get a little bit nutty when your guy steps right over his sock on his way to the bathroom? <laughs> and have you ever been upset when your man is glued to the TV when you think he should be looking for a job? <laughs> and men, are you ever baffled when your woman comes home with yet another pair of black shoes? <laughs> And have you ever been upset when during sex your woman starts talking about washing the curtains? <laughs> why, oh why, do we drive each other crazy? And what if no one is misbehaving? I'm really excited to give this talk today to you all because the concepts I'm going to share have really changed my own life and the life of my friends. Uh, before learning some of this, I can tell you that I was walking around as a man, usually in jeans, now I have a skirt on, and it was like I wanted to date a bearded woman. And so I wasn't really doing that well in the relationship front, both romantically and at work and with my family. And with understanding some of this, I now really can celebrate the differences between the masculine and the feminine, and it's just created a lot more ease for myself because I've learned to recognize it, have fun with it, and actually leverage it. What I'm talking about today, the masculine is wired to hunt. The masculine is the hunter. And the feminine is wired to gather. It's about survival. So I'm not talking about the frilliness of femininity or wearing a skirt or wearing feathers or laces. It's really how we interact to survive. But first, I want to share a few caveats. I know I use some stereotypical language in my opening questions with men and women. But really, I'm talking about the masculine and the feminine, and that both of us, all of us, have these energies, regardless of our sex. I will say, however, that biologically, we are wired, most of us, to be one way or the other. One will dominate. And men typically have up to 16 times more testosterone in their body, and the testosterone is what creates masculinity. And so while women, especially in the modern era, we can be very masculine, and we've, many of us have been growing up to be totally masculine. It's not necessarily our biology. And so one thing I believe is that's why women are so exhausted and we see so much trouble and challenge in women's health today. So I just want to invite you to try this on. See how it plays out in your own life. There are so many ways that I identify with the masculine. In my relationship, I'm the person that steps over that sock. And I still don't understand my girlfriends who shop for recreation and have 10 pair of black shoes. So those are ways that I don't relate to the traditional feminine role. So have fun with it and see how it shows up for you. Where do you relate to the masculine? Where do you relate to the feminine? And where does it show up in your relationships? And know that we both can operate from each and we can step in and out uh, with choice. The hunter is single focused and only notices what's relevant to the result to which he is currently committed. This means that everything else is drowned out. He does not hear you, he does not see you. So don't take it personally if you feel like you're being ignored. <laughs> this is how you step over that sock, because in that moment, you're not committed to picking up the laundry, you're committed to going to the bathroom. So don't see any intention, no one's misbehaving. I think sports are an excellent example of single focus. This is not the time to bring up something to your honey. You really want to set yourself up for success and get the focus of the hunter before you speak with them. The gatherer, on the other hand, has diffuse awareness. When the gatherer enters in a room, she notices the physical, mental, and emotional states of everything instantaneously. It's diffuse awareness. Consciousness is picking up everything. It's not multi-focus. The masculine almost cannot understand this. It's as if everything in the room is talking to you. So if you were to come in and the drapes are out of place and, oh, that light's tilted a little improperly and that chair is not in the right place, that all of this is literally speaking to the feminine. So you can imagine that there's a little bit of nuttiness going on in here at times. <laughs> this is how, while the masculine is focused on providing pleasure for the gatherer, she can just suddenly be talking about the drapes. Trust me, she'd rather be focused on her body and the pleasure that she's experiencing. 
One thing you can do instead of getting upset is just invite her to shut her eyes, and that might help her gather some focus. <laughs> <laughs> the hunter and the gatherer approach things differently. The hunter is committed and determined to reach the result. The gatherer, on the other hand, is flexible and likes to keep her options open. She's looking for anything that's edible, medicinal, useful, or beautiful. So you can see this play now if you've ever gone shopping as a hunter and a gatherer. The hunter is typically has a list, knows exactly where it is in the store, and is in and out. The gatherer, however, gets distracted by shiny objects and bright for, for sale signs. You can imagine that for survival, both of these skills were very, very important. The hunter is hunting and has to stay focused. If he were to get distracted by a bird or something, he's going to miss the kill and could likely be killed himself. With the gatherer, she's in charge of looking for all the plants, what can be eaten. So it's really, really important that she can scan and take in all the details and actually remember the details as important. This is why for the gatherer, truly a black shoe is not a black shoe, is not a black shoe. It's important that one has a heel and one is flat. One is a clog and one has a strappy back. And that one is suede and one is patent leather. Those details matter when it comes to survival. <laughs> we react differently depending on whether we're in a hunting mode or gathering mode. The hunter gets frustrated. If the hunter cannot uh, achieve his result, he will get frustrated. And the gatherer often tries to soothe the hunter and make him feel better. It's not the best way to support, and it usually uh, upsets the hunter even more. The gatherer, on the other hand, becomes overwhelmed. I already mentioned how everything is speaking to the gatherer. And the hunter often will advise to get focused and prioritize which is great advice to someone who actually can do that. The gatherer in, many, in the feminine literally cannot. Another thing that's really important to know is what motivates action from the hunter and the gatherer. And this one has really resonated for me living in the Bay Area. The hunter is only going to act if there's a sure win and that he's guaranteed a positive return on his investment. This includes money, time, focus, attention, all resources. So if the hunter does not think there's a sure bet, he will not act. This can appear to the gatherer as laziness. And I've seen this in job searching. You know, I live in the Bay Area. We've had the tech boom and bust and boom and bust. And so I've had many friends in relationships where one partner is out of work for an extended period of time. And I've noticed that the hunters often are single focused on one opportunity at a time and they will only be going after an opportunity that they're guaranteed they're going to get the job, which can be very frustrating to the gatherer because the gatherer thinks everything's worth doing. There's so much going on in the mind of the gatherer. There's such a massive to-do list at all times that the gatherer believes if I just get something done, it's great. I can check it off my list. I can get peace of mind. To the hunter, this is incredibly wasteful, scattered, and inefficient. So with a job search using this in the gatherer side, the gatherer will be online on all the job boards. She may even be on Craigslist. And she will try everyone, she will call everyone she knows and try everything that she can to get a job. And so you can imagine that these two different approaches each have their benefits, but they can really, really create some frustration for each side. So if we're so different, what can we do? Good news. There are ways that you can support the hunter. So if you recognize that your partner is in hunting mode, single focus, determined to achieve a result, you want to set them up for a win. There are a few ways you can do this. The number one thing you can do is get behind the plan, their plan. You probably think you're being helpful when you question their plan because you might be doing it, could do it better or more efficient or in a different way. But that's just really frustrating to the hunter. So accept their plan and get behind it. Ask them, how can I support your plan? And then provide. Provide tools, resources, and food is always a good option. <laughs> For a gatherer, 
the best thing you can do for a gatherer is give her peace of mind and do something for her. But first, you want to make sure to ask how to do it because you want to do it her way or it will become more work in the end. If you cannot do something, that's okay. If you can provide pleasant company while she's doing it, that's a great thing to do. But if you're going to sit there and have some commentary or get disgruntled or be distracted and it's not so pleasant for the gatherer, then please just give her space. Ask her how you can give her space so that she can get done what she needs to get done. The good news is we do have some commonalities. Appreciation is fuel for both the hunter and the gatherer. You want to be constantly appreciating the hunter for the results that are produced, for the focus, for the commitment, and for the effort. We can often get caught up in the how and it wasn't done exactly how I did it or I would have done it this way or you really want to let that go and just really appreciate their commitment to getting something done for providing for you and how they are going about doing it. And for the gatherer, you want to also appreciate whatever results the gatherer is getting and also who she is and how she's being. Both the feminine and the masculine are different ways of being and the more that we can just celebrate and appreciate, it creates a lot more ease. So leverage it, let people be who they are and let them express how they need to express. So what do we do with all this information? <laughs> I just invite you to call it out and be playful with it. Just say, oh, you're being a hunter or you're being a gatherer, and know that you can flop in and out of these roles regardless of the sex. And you might even call it a monkey moment. Remember that this is about survival. It's your subconscious. It is primal. It is running the show. We're still just fancy animals. And no one is misbehaving. Thank you.